to give this great uh, dialogue, which it essentially is, and its place in our modern world of thought. And we come across two or three uh, important points which call for, well, a certain divergence from our principal theme or stream. So we will have to be prepared uh, to reach out in a comparative religion just a little in order to clarify the issue. And the story takes, as in the case of the vision of Ezekiel or in the Apocalypse of John, the general pattern of the recounting of a mystical experience which occurred to the principal person, in this case, Hermes. There is nothing whatever that is in the vision, as it is called, which will give us any clue to the historical and orientation of Hermes or his character and personality. There is no description of it. He simply appears as a person passing through an extraordinary internal revelation. And having received the instruction, achieving to a dedication by means of which he went forth to share it with all who would listen. Thus, the Hermes of the vision is a person without a uh, crystallized personality. He is an archetypal kind of person. Perhaps he represents all truth seekers, or the truth seeker. Certainly, he uh, experiences that which all truth seekers hope to experience. The kind of a reward by which they come in the end to the substance of their soul's desire. So we find, according to the vision itself, this man wandering forth alone into the wilderness. He comes to a distant place, a place apparently barren and forlorn, but one apart from the ordinary habitations of men. Here he sits himself and begins the quiet internal meditation upon the mystery of truth. Now in this meditation we are told in the vision, for example, that Hermes divides himself or separates himself from his body and his senses. This almost immediately gives us a sort of certain in the yoga or the danza. The presence of a discipline by means of which the conscious energies are directed away from objective things, is clearly indicated. Hermes was following a formula or a pattern. He was performing a certain kind of devotion. And the implication further is that this devotion is that which was taught in the mysteries or in the secret schools of initiation. In any event, he retired into the inner parts of himself. He relaxed his objective senses. He depended not upon them, but upon the extension of an intuitive nature within him. And as he internalized, separating himself totally from all the concerns of this world, 